Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Bodacious Rant with Burn and Ryan. I hope everybody's having a great week. Again, we're leading into uh, Christmas, uh, you know, for those who celebrate that and stuff. So I hope everybody's, hope everybody's in the Yuletide spirits and holiday, you know, what have yous. Um, but here we're talking about a very special movie this year that I wish was more in theaters more, but... It's going to Netflix, which again is is not horrible because everybody gets to see it if you have a Netflix account, so that's awesome. Um, but this is definitely one of those that need to be in theaters, like actually in theaters. Uh, we're talking about today's uh, Glass Onion: A Knives Out Mystery, which is the sequel to 2019's uh, Knives Out, starring Daniel Craig, directed by Ryan Johnson, who has also directed um, Star Wars: uh, The Last Jedi. So, um, yeah. And uh, before we get started, guys, this is a non-spoiler review, so because even though it's streaming, we don't want to spoil... It's a mystery, guys. We, we don't want to spoil everything for you. Uh, we want you to genuinely enjoy this because this is one of the best movies of the year, uh, in both my, mine and Bird's opinions. And um, as always, please give us a like, uh, subscribe, and uh, don't forget to ring the bell so you can stay up to date on everything. We do appreciate it, guys, and can't wait to go into 2023 with uh, you know some of the new people we've added. And hopefully we can get more ranters because we love it. Um, but like I said, as this being a sequel, this one is one of the better movies. Why? Because it actually took place, uh, during COVID. So it has that sense of reality. And, um, basically these people are brought to an Island where, uh, they are here to celebrate a weekend starring, uh, with uh, Edward Norton's character and, and they're there to solve a murder. Like everybody's there to invite to solve a murder. And again, again, it's got Daniel Craig who returns as Benoit Blanc. Uh, just as hilarious as always. Uh, Edward Norton is the new character. Um, Dave Batista, Catherine Hahn, uh, Kate Hudson, Jennifer Henwick. And the one actor I can't remember. Janelle Monet. Well, not Janelle Monet. Who's who is the other guy? The um, the guy that worked with them. Oh, Leslie Odom Jr. Leslie Odom Jr. Thank you. It was on the tip of my tongue and I forgot. Um, they all, it's, it's such another great cast. And that was the best thing about the last Knives Out. We had Don Johnson, Jamie Lee Curtis, um, the, uh, Catherine Langford, uh, Tony Collette. So, uh, they continued this trend and I was a little worried when things go to Netflix or when certain directors make deals on Netflix. And it, it's one of those things like, did they sacrifice like storytelling and quality, uh, for just for Netflix? Cause Netflix is kind of like, um, how do I put this? I would say it's the McDonald's of entertainment where they got a bit of everything and they're constantly turning it's not out a stuff. bad way to put it. <laughs> I mean, I, it's, it's the fast food of, of entertainment and streaming and stuff like because everybody else has stuff for streaming, but they're con now they had to slow down, but they're constantly turning out content for whatever reason. So um, and I mean, Burn and I got to see this in theaters uh, a few weeks ago and my God, it was freaking hilarious. So well done. I, I may even like it better than the first one, to be honest. And and I know Hollywood has that bad trope of just constant sequels and remakes. No, basically, lack of originality. But I will say this. At least Knives Out is an original franchise, much like Avatar. And if they're getting sequels from an original franchise, that's that's still a win. And this was definitely a win here. Uh, Burn, what did you think of this movie? Yeah, man. I mean, a win is the best way to describe this. Like you, you know, when we found out a few, uh, like a couple years ago that uh, Netflix has struck a deal with Ryan Johnson to, to buy out, you know, the Knives Out franchise. You know, I think they ordered two sequels and, um, you know, potential for maybe more, but it was going to be exclusive to the streaming service. You know, they paid like almost $500 million for it. So it was a pretty huge deal, you know, that, that Netflix made. And while, again, as I mentioned before, it, it's, it's really cool that, you know, people will be able to have a little bit easier access to watch this movie. Uh, going from, you know, the first one being in theaters and being a pretty big hit for for movie theaters at the time uh to then go to net, uh, netflix streaming it feels like oh man like i hope the the quality doesn't doesn't dip you know dip down or i hope it doesn't feel like a streaming movie because as much you know as, as we like streaming movies you know we get some good ones here and there um there's a definite like feel to them like it's like okay that is definitely like a streaming type movie um and this one is doesn't fall into that trap this is a little bit more on the lines of um the irishman and like roma you know like it's a very rare group of like those netflix movies that come out that feel like they belong in the theaters and are meant to be seen in the theaters and this is 
absolutely one of them. Ryan Johnson knocked it out of the park once again. I, I really, really love uh, the first Knives Out movie, and and I know you do too. We we quote it constantly, and and it's nice to have like a really good you know murder mystery series. It feels like we haven't gotten that a lot as of late. I know they were big back in the day, but you know as of late they, they don't really like we don't really get a lot of murder mysteries, let alone good murder mysteries. It feels like they're they're more. Um, they more exist in the realm of like uh, streaming TV shows, you know, like in like HBO Max and stuff like that. Like we get like a lot of murder series nowadays instead of movies nowadays. But to to see like an actual really good murder mystery movie, it's awesome. And uh, the cast here is absolutely fantastic, uh, much like the first movie. And the the way Ryan Johnson plays with the murder mystery tropes here, much like he did in the first movie, uh, is just so much fun to watch. It, it, like you know when you watch those movies where you where you see what's happening on screen and you're like, man, they must have a, had a really good time filming this movie. This is one of those movies where it's just like everyone's on their game and everyone looks like they're having the best time of their lives. Yeah, and that's that's the best thing. Like everyone. Uh, everyone just literally delivers their best performance and it's not like okay not saying their best performance but they do their best to really flesh out the characters that they have and they're again quite an eclectic group of characters i'm not going to go too much more into spoilers um because it was just it was so damn funny i think my favorite person in the movie was dave batista and and just daniel craig they're so great in this they're complete opposite ends of the spectrum but when they come on screen their little character bits it's just it was too good, especially Daniel Craig. He needs to do more comedies, especially stuff like this. Because in the last one, yeah, we my favorite part to quote from the first one was when he's getting the family riled up about what happened and each other's motives, especially when Don Johnson's leaking shit about his brother-in-law. He's just sitting there acting surprised, just, no. Like, the eyes open, everything is just... And he kind of brings that same uh, A game here. So, um, right out of the gate, this is definitely... I feel like I'm throwing this out a little bit recently, but at the same time, there's, there's been some great movies. So I'm going to give this a 5 out of 5, too, uh, just because it was so well done. Um, you know, the visuals are great. It looks like, you know, it just looks fantastic. Every actor does a great job in this. And, yeah, I, I wish it was in theaters. This is definitely the kind of movie that should be experienced in the in the theater, but... You know, it's fine. Netflix, you can make your own theater at home. Turn off the lights, get cozy, get a little weird. Um, you know, have some snacks, and there you go. <laughs> yeah, for sure, dude. I mean, Daniel Craig looks like he's having the time of his life in this role. And this is probably my favorite role that, that he's done. I really like him as Bond. He's great as Bond. He's, you know, he's my Bond, but... There's just something about the character of Benoit Blanc that it just looks like he's having the absolute most fun with, and and it and it shows on screen, and and I'm 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 so happy that uh, we get to see more of Daniel Craig and and in a light that we don't usually get to see him in, you know, and he's more in the serious roles. This is a little bit more comedic, and he really shines in it. Much like I don't know if you saw that that movie that he did with Soderbergh, um, Logan Lucky. He plays a similar-ish character, you know, with the with the Southern accent, and it's a lot of fun for anyone that likes his role here in these two movies. Definitely go check that out. But um, yeah, I mean, the, as far as the rest of the cast goes, I think um, the biggest surprise for me personally was Kate Hudson. Yeah, she was. She, was crazy. she got the biggest laughs, <laughs> for, out of me and the audience that I saw it with when I got to see it in the movie. She's so dumb, but she's like, and I think it's nice that all these characters are doing this because they've been mostly in like dramatic stuff lately, especially Catherine Hahn. Like she's come out as such a great dramatic actor dave batista is doing a lot more serious stuff so it's a nice like i think it was a nice break for all of them to be like let's just do something fun it's still a little serious but it's way funnier than it should be yeah i mean exactly like again she was a, a huge surprise you know in the cast with Catherine hahn i thought she was going to be you know the the one that gets the biggest laughs just because out of all of them she's by far the funniest but Kate Hudson just just runs away with it, but uh, this is very much uh, you know Daniel Craig's movie, mm -hmm. and to an extent uh, Janelle Monae's. I, I mean, I won't elaborate any further, but much like uh, Anna Darmas's character in the first movie, you know, this is like Janelle Monae's movie as well. So uh, I think she did a really good job of that. 
um yeah i mean the the this movie i guess if i were to have a, a couple little complaints for it it felt like it took a little bit to get going uh in the beginning but again that's a lot of setup for the characters and establishing everyone together which i think they do a really good job of so it doesn't come shooting out of the gate like the first movie does but what it builds to is i would I, I think I would say at this point, I think I find it a little bit more entertaining. Uh, again, th- we'll see how this movie withstands the test of time. I know we've had a couple years now with the with the first movie, but uh, I don't expect this movie to, to drop at, by, at any point um, uh, as far as repeat viewings goes. I think actually this might be an even more uh, rewarding repeat viewing, you know, going in knowing what happens by the end of the movie. It seems like uh, going into it the second time... Um, it should be a lot of fun too so i like that it was designed in that sort of way and i appreciate when when mystery movies do that so um other than that i think there are a a couple of characters that kind of get lost in the shovel it's not as big as an ensemble cast as the first movie was The, the first movie had a lot more characters this one has a little bit of a smaller group but even then i do feel like a couple of them get a little bit lost in the fold um as far as you know the other eccentric characters go <laughs> but uh other than that man this is this is a wildly entertaining movie i think one of the best written movies of the year for sure um uh, despite those those minor nitpicks and even with all that um, i'm also going to give this uh, movie a five out of five it's, it's just a wildly entertaining movie there isn't any one of those negatives that i feel completely detracts a point from any uh, of this so um so yeah, it, it's a, on Netflix December 23rd, and I think people should definitely watch it because it, it's just a fantastic time. You heard of the man. December 23rd, that's coming up really soon. So yeah, uh, guys, as soon as it drops, let us know in the comments what did you think of this movie. And for those of you who may be caught in theaters like we did, did you guys like it? You know, Did you have a chance to see it? Um, well, like I said, other than that, just... God, definitely this is one to, to stream especially on the on the Christmas weekend so um, you know until then guys uh, we will definitely we'll, we'll all keep in touch of course but as always stay bodacious and uh, keep on renting for the both of us absolutely everybody be good be safe and as always we'll catch y'all on the next one